In June of 1776, the State House in Philadelphia was home to the Second Continental Congress. As the leaders of the colonies gathered to consider their future, a massive British war fleet arrived in New York Harbor. Shots had been fired at Lexington and Concord. Relations with the King and with England were deteriorating rapidly. Congress decided to break completely with its mother country. It was deemed time for America to announce its independence in a bold pronouncement. In June of 1776, Thomas Jefferson worked on a draft of the document in a rented room near the State House. It was a declaration of the Americans acting on the right of revolution by rejecting the rule of Great Britain. That, in the context of the 18th century world, is a tremendously radical act, a great experiment that many people predicted, many Americans predicted, would fail. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Yes, Mr. President. Thank you. Jefferson's draft prompted a spirited debate. The delegates knew that signing the declaration would be considered an act of treason, punishable by hanging. With so much at stake, it was important to all that the message of the declaration be worthy of the risk. On July 4, 1776, the delegates voted and unanimously approved the Declaration of Independence. Virginia says, yay. This is the moment in which the Americans come to terms with the fact that they're doing something revolutionary, something radical that might change their world and might change the whole world. Printer John Dunlap now found himself at the center of the birth of a new nation. The printer worked hard, deep into the night. 13 colonies urgently awaited the proof of its declared independence. Dunlap's broadsides, as they are now called, were the first printed copies of the Declaration of Independence. The broadsides were typeset. The official handwritten or engrossed copy would not be signed until August. Averaging 20 inches in height and 16 inches in width, Dunlap's prints look much like a newspaper page or a poster today. The members of Congress had voted for independence. Now that independence would be declared to the world. On July 5th, 1776, John Dunlap's broadsides of the day-old Declaration of Independence were rushed out across the land. When in the course of human events... It becomes On July 8, 1776, Colonel John Nixon gave the first public reading of the Declaration to a large crowd gathered outside of the Pennsylvania State House. To which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. We hold these truths to be self-evident. News of independence bolstered the Continental Army in the field. By their creator with certain unalienable rights. These United Colonies are... From Maine to Georgia, the word of independence spread in newspapers, state assemblies, and town squares. It was still a long and dangerous road to freedom from English rule, but the word was out. Independence had been declared. On the evening of July 1st, Delaware delegate Caesar Rodney began the 80-mile journey from Dover to Philadelphia in a driving rain. Without his vote in favor of independence, the break from England would be delayed. In a letter to his brother, Rodney wrote, I arrived in Congress, though detained by thunder and rain, time enough to give my voice in the matter of independence. It is determined by the 13 United Colonies without even one dissenting colony. Like Caesar Rodney, all of the revolutionaries began their adult lives as loyal British subjects. 
42 signers had held British government posts in their home colonies. Many were from the wealthiest families in the colonies. 24 were lawyers and jurists. 12 were merchants, 9 were farmers and large plantation owners. 4 were doctors. These men knew they had the most to lose in a war with England. Yet they were prepared to make sacrifices to create a free and independent nation. On August 2nd, 1776, the members of Congress began adding their names to the handwritten or engrossed copy of the Declaration. After several months, the document bore the names of 56 men who had declared their allegiance to the idea of a new nation founded on revolutionary principles. Perhaps the most significant thing about the Declaration is that it's a commitment or a pledge among the signers that they will be true to the cause, that they will not compromise, that there can be no compromise. And that's important because so many Americans are unsure about the revolution. The signers were now forever linked. We must all hang together, Benjamin Franklin is said to have stated upon his signing, or assuredly, we shall all hang separately. The signers took a tremendous political and personal risk. You think to yourself, well, of course they signed that document. Who wouldn't sign that document? But it was a very daring thing to do. To the front. March! 17 of the signers served in the military during the American Revolution. March! While the signers were absent from home working to unite the colonies, their families were often forced to flee to avoid British troops. Some had their homes destroyed. Others lost their fortunes. But despite these hardships, the signers remained steadfast in their desire to fight for independence. The Declaration has produced a new era in this part of America. The spirit of liberty remains triumphant in Philadelphia. There is no looking back. The prospect forward is exceedingly better and more hopeful we have a noble prize in view. In the fall of 1783, the Treaty of Paris ended the Revolutionary War. The Declaration of Independence, the symbol of the revolution, would soon become the nation's most revered document. Yet its growing influence was due not to its statement of revolution, but to its declaration of the rights of mankind. The Declaration of Independence became a sacred icon because it was the only national document, and is the only national document, that states that all men are created equal and that they have certain inherent rights given to them by their Creator. Those words are not in the Constitution or in the Bill of Rights. The only national document that states them is the Declaration of Independence. The passing of the signers' generation and the rise of patriotism following the War of 1812 created a desire among many Americans to see the Declaration for themselves. Benjamin Owen Tyler and John Binns rushed to be the first to produce facsimiles of the Declaration. The publishers took orders for their reproductions. Tyler's first requests came from the nation's founding fathers themselves. While facsimiles grew in popularity, the declaration signed by the members of Congress had deteriorated greatly. In 1820, Secretary of State John Quincy Adams commissioned William J. Stone to create an official copy of the document. He preserved that document for later generations. What we know as the Declaration of Independence is the stone facsimile. By the mid-19th century, the words of the Declaration of Independence were well preserved on paper. The document's message, however, would also become a cornerstone of our nation's culture in the years to come. When we think about the country and how it started and why it started, we look first to the Declaration of Independence. And it has been an enduring and a remarkable document. 
the precursor and the foundation for the uh, adoption of our Constitution and our form of government. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. What distinguished this paper from all the others was the final irrevocable decision that it took to assert the independence of free states in place of colonies and to commit to that goal their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created in truth. The document Thomas Jefferson drafted has served as the defining statement of America's way of government and way of life for well over 200 years. The Albert and Shirley Small Special Collections Library at the University of Virginia is home to the most comprehensive Declaration of Independence collection. These rare materials are an invaluable resource for students and scholars researching our nation's past. It's just critical if we're going to survive as a nation that all our citizens know and understand the fundamental beliefs that cause the formation of this country and that stand at the bottom for the things in which we most strongly believe. So you have to start at the beginning and that means the Declaration of Independence. The Albert H. Small Declaration of Independence collection features one of only 25 Dunlap broadsides in existence. The document serves as a reminder of our individual liberties and as an inspiration to recall our founding freedoms. <laughs>